thank you for the warm introduction. Hello, I'm Ryan Fox, Developer Advocate here at Algorand, and it's my honor to present here at the Upbit Developer Conference and make new connections with developers, business leaders, and enthusiasts within Korea and around the globe. I'm joining you from my home here in Boston, in the United States. Welcome. I do hope we're able to connect in person in the near future, but until then, please connect with me on Twitter and also be sure to follow Algorand. Today I'm going to be talking about smart contracts and decentralized application. This talk is aimed at the beginner, someone who has the desire to learn something new. I'll teach you what the components of a smart contract are, how to design and deploy one, and ultimately how to interact with one as a fully decentralized application on the blockchain. My goal today is to inspire you, inspire you to build, to build the future. At Algorand, we like to say we are building FutureFi. As I look out at you developers from across this globe, I recall attending my first local Bitcoin meetup long before there were such things as blockchain conferences, and even before there were purpose-built smart contracting platforms like Ethereum and Algorand. At that time, I was very much in awe of autonomous systems and consensus protocols. In the case of Bitcoin, they had created an autonomous system where the byproduct of their interactions, the consensus protocol, was digital cash, a cryptocurrency. However, what struck me most at that first meetup was when an individual introduced us to the concept of a smart contract on the Bitcoin network. I was inspired because I saw for the first time something beyond just a simple cryptocurrency moving around their network. I saw how information could be programmed into the blockchain, evaluated, and value exchanged as a result. My hope is that you will find something in my talk, or perhaps one of the other speakers here at the UDC conference, that will inspire you to build. So today I'm going to cover some basic blockchain and smart contract theory. Then I'll move into the development side with some coding examples. I assume you have some basic level of programming background, but I don't expect you to have any blockchain development experience. I'll walk you through acquiring the tools and provide you the resources you'll need to build your first decentralized smart contract and deploy it as a decentralized application. I'm confident you've watched the previous presentations and gathered at least a high level understanding of blockchain, likely in the context of a cryptocurrency. Before stepping straight into smart contracts, let's have a brief review of some key blockchain features. All blockchains have three basic components. They're decentralized. This means that there is a random leader selection. No one is in control, and all participants have the opportunity to join or leave at will and participate in the consensus proportionally to their individual network contributions. Blockchains are distributed. This means that all network participants calculate an identical ledger their shared truth using the consensus protocol. And all blockchains are immutable, meaning they cannot be changed. They are a penned only ledger of transactions. Where when we're at the head of the blockchain, we have successfully evaluated all prior transactions in the ledger and thus calculated which addresses hold a balance. These properties provide the foundation for creating a programmable system, a smart contract platform. Now, most modern blockchain protocols provide at least some level of programmability, which allow transactions to include instructions and data, which can be logically evaluated. Let's begin exploring smart contracts with a quote from the inventor himself. In 1994, Nick Szabo wrote, a smart contract is a computerized transaction protocol that executes the terms of a contract. His original writings described a simple vending machine dispensing a cold drink only if sufficient coins were provided. He goes on to describe cryptographic systems that would prevent theft of property, say an automobile, 
by rendering it inoperable until the proper challenge response was provided by the owner, or render it inoperable if payments were not made to the creditor. Blockchain is an excellent choice to implement this definition of a smart contract, because the blockchain provides the single source of truth using its decentralized consensus protocol, it's tamper-proof, and it's a transactional system. So developers can easily design contract and code, deploy it to the blockchain, and then allow the consensus protocol to enforce the provisions that are described. Let's take a look at the components of a smart contract. We'll start with the blockchain accounts. Think of this as you, the developer, who will be authorizing the deployment of your smart contract to the blockchain. Accounts will also represent users of your smart contract. Next, we'll take a look at the logic program, or your smart contract. This is a computer program that gets installed into the blockchain by the developer. And importantly, it will compile into an immutable identifier. Next, we have application call transactions. These are special transactions addressing a specific application identifier and may include data that the program logic will process. When the consensus network observes the app call transaction, it will send it to the execution environment. This is commonly known as a virtual machine, and it's a runtime within the consensus protocol, meaning that all validation nodes will execute the smart contact program logic and either include that transaction in the next block or discard it altogether if evaluation fails. Next are state transitions. These apply the results from a successful smart contract execution. State transitions may impact balances and or key value data. Note that balances and data are held by accounts and logic programs are actually a special type of account. So smart contracts typically hold both data and balances. With the components now defined, I'd like to shift your thinking away from the concept of the blockchain ledger just tracking transactions between addresses for cryptocurrency transfers to a ledger which tracks state. State is a much broader set of information held by the blockchain, which includes balances, assets, applications, and arbitrary data owned by the accounts. What that really means is there's a logic program authorized by a developer, which is then deployed to the blockchain so that code can be executed by the consensus protocol whenever an application transaction is presented for evaluation. If that logic program completes successfully, all of the state transitions it processed will be will be committed to the current state found at the head block. If the logic program fails, the transaction is discarded. All temporary state transitions the program encountered are abandoned, and the current state is not impacted. All right, let's build. Let's get into the code. We've got three things to take a look at here. We're going to first set up your developer environment, get it all ready so that you can design and deploy your very first decentralized application. And thereafter, we're going to do some interactions with it. The thing we're going to do is install Algorand Sandbox. Issue the git clone command to this repository. Once it downloads, change directory into the sandbox directory and issue the command sandbox up. Shortly thereafter, it will begin creating the nodes, the indexer, and the APIs, everything you need to get started with Algorand. It brings up a few accounts that you can use. It also brings up a couple of commands that you can use to test your environment. Here's a sample transaction sending some value from one account to the other. When that transaction is confirmed, you'll see that you can copy the next curl command, which is actually issuing a command to the indexer to query for the most recent transaction. Next, it's time to install your SDK. We have SDKs in multiple languages. Well, we'll try it here with Python. So issue the command pip3 install pi.algorand.sdk.
you'll see that it downloads the latest version, in this case, version 1.7.0. Next, we'll install the VS Code plugin for Algorand. Search for Algorand, and you'll see that you have the VS Code extension. Install it, and you're all set. Now that your development environment is all set up, it's time to head over to the Algorand developer portal at developer.algorand.org and search for your first application in the search bar at the top. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll find the draft application code there. Go ahead and copy that and let's paste it into a brand new file we'll call approval.teal. Here's our logic program for the example counter application. It's broken into a few sections for readability. All Algorand logic programs begin with a pound pragma version definition. This informs the Algorand virtual machine what version our program was compiled with. Line 3 is a comment for the block of code with a getter command. In this case, we will read the value from a key called counter. The next code block places the integer 1 on the stack and adds it to the counter value it got above. The next code block is duplicating this value, then storing it within the runtime scratch space for use later during the program execution. The penultimate code block is a setter and puts the update value into the counter key, which is left on the stack from the first code block. The final code block retrieves the stored value from scratch base and completes the program execution with the return command. The AVM now evaluates this return value. If it's a positive integer value, the calling transaction is included in the next block and the state transitions are applied as processed. Any other return value will cause the AVM to exit with an error. Thus, the transaction fails within the consensus protocol, so no, straight, so no state transitions are applied. I return to our developer portal page here. Scroll down just a bit to the deploy new application section. We've got some deployment code here. This is in bash, but we'll copy it into a brand new file. We'll call this uh, deploy.sh. What's in this file? are some parameters that we must configure uh, that will define uh, how this application is configured within the blockchain and then who is deploying it. Um, we are deploying this into our sandbox environment, so we'll copy in a couple of additional commands here so we can copy those up there. And then we'll need to find our creator address. And we can do that by issuing the sandbox up command at any time, which will return to us the list of accounts that are inside of that development environment. We can copy any one of them, paste them into our deployment script, and then we can save those up. Uh, we've got to make a couple more changes here. Uh, we, we named our files slightly different. Uh, another thing we have to do is create a clear program. The clear program is one of the parameters that are required by our script. Uh, we're going to go in here, clean up this just a little bit, and then we'll get ready to uh, deploy this smart contract. Once we uh, deploy that, we'll get back the application ID number two, and we're going to use that in some of our future commands. Let's take a look at the application that we just deployed. So we've got a command here to get the information for that app ID. Notice that uh, it is an app ID number two, and that creator identifier is the same as what we put into our script. Also notice that these global and local values match what we had in our script. So next we're going to take a look at what the account that uh, created this looks like, and we'll get, a, get the ability to uh, take a look at the values that it's storing. So remember, when this application was deployed, the contract was called, therefore this counter value is currently set to one. That's that UI one for that key value pair there. So we'll head back over to the developer portal and we've got some other commands that we can copy over to run this application, to call it again. Um, what we need to do though is fill out a couple of uh, env environment variables here. So we're going to uh, set the app ID to two and we are going to uh, set that creator ID as it was before. And we are going to issue these sandbox commands here. We'll just copy them in, paste them and we'll execute them and you'll see that this will confirm an application call transaction from the creator. And what that does is call the application, execute that contract code, and that counter value is now incremented by one. So now we see that the UI value is two. 
uh, we'll repeat this uh, another time here, and we'll see that that value has now gone up to three. Next, let's try to uh, use a different account. We can use uh, one of the other three accounts from Sandbox provided, and we're going to call this same application uh, from a different account. So we'll do that here the first time, and we'll take a look at it. Yes, it's gone up to incremented up to number four, and then let's try to do it just one more time, and we'll see that that final value then is five now. We've called it a total of five times from two different accounts. So how about if we try to deploy this to test network? What we've been doing thus far is been doing it on a private network, but how about if we turn that sandbox version down, we'll clear it, and then we'll bring up the testnet version. So we just issue the command sandbox up testnet and we'll ask if we want to clear that data from our private network. Yes, we do. Here we go. I'm going to speed this up. So what this actually does is uh, do a fast catch up, gets all the blocks, and then gets us ready to deploy this on the testnet. All right, well now we're synced on testnet and I'm going to head over to the dispenser. I've created an account here in my sandbox environment. I'm going to deploy some testnet funds to it, and then I'm going to paste that address into our same uh, deployment script that we had before, and I'm going to issue the commands to deploy that same script to the test network. Right, we've got the new application ID back from the test network. We're going to paste in our testnet account address as well, and then we're going to call that application ID, and then we're going to dump that account so that we can take a look at the values that it has. And as you can see, that counter value is now set to two, once for when we deployed it, and then once for the time that we called it just now. So I encourage everybody else now to uh, try this app ID themselves on testnet, and you yourself can increment this application ID as well. So there you have it your first app in about 10 minutes. It only took a couple minutes more to migrate that application to the testnet, so you can try it there as well. Sure, it's a rather simple application only capable of incrementing a counter, but it does demonstrate how the example code can be deployed by anyone. Thereafter, it will continue to do exactly what they coded it to do. Anyone is free to interact with it, and I sure hope you do. The possibilities of smart contracts are endless. I do believe that smart contracts, implemented as decentralized protocols, will disintermediate away a large portion of the companies in what we know today broadly as the financial services sector by the end of this decade. DeFi is more than just a buzzword. It's generating real value for its participants. Just two weeks ago, Uniswap became the first DeFi protocol to generate $1 billion in fees. Supply chain, digital identifiers, insurance, real estate, and scores more sector are seeing innovative companies move beyond the proof of concept phase that we saw in 2017 and into the implementation phase. At Algorand, we see many companies and governments leveraging our blockchain technology. Next week marks one year since Circle began issuing their USDC stablecoin on Algorand. And just two days ago, the government of El Salvador announced official government records would be hosted on Algorand by year's end. So the use cases are real, the protocol is robust, scalable, and as you can see, fast. We're ready for you. So let's build more contracts together. And here are a couple of resources that I want you to be aware of. Of course, you've already seen the developer portal, and that's where all of our sample code that you saw today is located. That's on the web at developer.algorand.org. You can shoot that QR code and get there quickly. There you're going to find tutorials, solutions, articles, and much more on the way. Our Discord server is the primary source for connecting with Algorand DevRel and engineering teams. Lots of channels are there for such things as the SDKs, authoring smart contracts, the Algorand wallet, and all things FutureFi really enjoyed my time here with you today. We covered quite a bit in these past few minutes. We breezed right through blockchain basics, then explored the components of smart contracts. We had fun diving into some sample code and seeing what it's like to author your own decentralized application and deploying it to the Algorand network. I do hope you were inspired. I do hope you will build something great. Please connect with me on Twitter or Discord 
and be sure to follow Algorand as well. Thanks, and have fun building on Algorand. Sure. So uh, TL stands for Transaction Execution uh, uh, Language. And um, w yes, TL was developed by Algorand, and it is a stack-based language, uh, very similar to what we see in Bitcoin Script, um, where uh, commands are uh, put on the stack and then uh, popped off individually. Um, it, it is uh, somewhat similar to... Um, to what we see with, with, with Solidity on, on Ethereum as well, uh, although um, that is much more of a higher level language, whereas uh, is Teal is, uh, is, is much more representing the bytecode that it is then compiled down into. Yeah, so certainly Algorand have been looking at this, and this was uh, one of the uh, pillars that uh, Sylvia McCauley, the Turing Award-winning uh, founder of Algorand, really went after, which was scalability and, and, and retaining speed. So today we can do uh, 10,000 plus transactions per second, and we have seen uh, uh, 6,000 transactions per second uh, happening today. Um, now, we're moving towards uh, even more speed uh, later on this year as we will try to approach closer to 45,000 transactions per second. So that far exceeds as anything that we've really uh, experienced in this space in the past. And then beyond that, uh, we'll be looking for layer two solutions as well, where uh, computation of uh, applications that will take too long to process within uh, two seconds or so can then be uh, processed off chain and then committed th those state changes that were um, that that were made by this group of consensus uh, witnesses off chain can then uh, put those state changes onto the mainnet and the mainnet will update those um, that way. So that is uh, ways that we are developing co-chains and ways that we think that we will be able to sustain and uh, move uh, along with what the world needs for uh, proper blockchain execution times. Uh, I guess at, at the time when uh, when Savo was 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 writing about this and when the cypherpunks were out there thinking about all of these wild and crazy ideas, um, there wasn't a autonomous system out there that could provide that level of truth. Um, and Bitcoin was the first one to be able to deliver that. And and with that, um, now we have seen expansions of other types of uh, platforms that are purpose built for doing smart contract execution. Um, and why that is, um, I, I don't know why, 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 it, uh, why it took so long. I mean, I, everything that Bitcoin is was already there. It's just a novel way to put all these different components together. And when that worked, and when we observed that an autonomous system could actually carry on itself and that there were uh, network participants who were willing to contribute their resources to that, other systems came along. Uh, Ethereum, Algorand, and, and, and many, many others um, have also taken that on to say, well, what are some of the shortcomings of previous systems and how can we overcome those, um, perhaps with other trade-offs or by uh, adding in new technology where it sees fit? Sure. Um, so I don't have specific knowledge of that deal that was just announced a couple of days ago, um, but certainly what they were evaluating is, is what many of the different organizations and governments are, are, are looking at in Algorand, and, and that is the, the high transaction speed, the low fees, and then, of course, the very fast uh, time to finality. So the Algorand blockchain uh, does not fork. So everything um, that happens within the four and a half second block time. When that is committed, that block will not fork uh, in the future. And that has to do with the verifiable random function 
uh, that that we are implementing. That's our novel uh, contribution to this space. And I believe that that is really what is uh, allowing these uh, organizations and governments to look closely at Algorand uh, as they consider which platform they want to build their future upon. Thank <laughs> you.